right, so I'm excited to tell you a little bit about how we are using GIS to aid in our carnivore conservation efforts in Misiones, Argentina. It is located uh, in northeast Argentina. It sits between Paraguay and Brazil. It's probably best known for Iguazu Falls. Anyways, if we look at um, this, we can actually see that Misiones is really quite unique in that it contains what's con considered the largest remaining tract of interior Atlantic forest. And in fact, uh, Paraguay and Brazil have almost none left, but Misiones contains about half of it still intact, and half of that is in protected areas. The problem is, if you look at those large green things, those large green things are the protected areas. And those protected areas are becoming isolated islands surrounded by human modified habitat. Um, and if we look outside of the protected areas, the native forest is actually located in this um, mosaic of monocultural plantations, small-scale agriculture, uh, pastures that typically have African grasses, and urban areas. In addition, outside of those protected areas, and even inside the protected areas, there is an expanding network of roads across the region, with many dirt roads being converted to high-velocity paved highways. Look at Misiones, our primary goal, our ultimate goal, was to look at developing biological corridors that conserve between the protected areas in the northern region and what we consider the central region. Basically, this area right here. Look for biological corridors that maximize mobility between protected areas and minimize uh, the potential for human wildlife conflict as animals travel through there. If we look at uh, how we did this, in order to locate the optimal location for a biological corridor, we need to understand how species that move outside of protected areas are moving across habitat. Do they avoid human modified? Do they use human modified habitat? So our first goal became actually looking at species and understanding how are their habitat preferences? What are species specific habitat preferences and what is the overlap of those? We targeted five wide-ranging carnivores, the jaguar, puma, ocelot, oncilla, and bush dog. How we did this is really the key to our success to how we're getting to the point we are today in that we used a set of two kind of innovative techniques. The first one we used was detection dogs, conservation detection dogs. Our dog was trained to locate scat from those five species, ignore all others, which allowed us to cover a very large geographic area quickly rapidly, efficiently, and only target those species, cover a variety of habitats, as well as outside of protected areas, which was previously not possible with camera trap data. We also used a set of genetic techniques that allowed us to extract DNA from that scat, confirm species identity, as well as differentiate individuals and determine the sex of those samples. Those two techniques Producing the genetic analyses, because we actually had every point, every scat geo-referenced, we could then use GIS to amplify our genetic analyses, gain power to it, and address our conservation questions. So what did we do? We had conducted three intensive surveys, 2009, 11, and 13. We covered almost 200 unique tracks, so almost 1,200 kilometers. About two-thirds of those were in or around protected areas, but one-third were outside of protected areas. Um, of those that we found, we collected over 900 high-quality scats. High-quality meaning it didn't look like it had a tree or mold growing on it, so we collected those scats. Of those, 85% were concerned with genetic analyses to be one of our five. The rest either had poor DNA or mixed DNA. And of those, because we had samples from all five species across habitats, and inside and outside of protected areas, we could now use GIS to actually generate potential species distribution models and get into our first step of habitat preferences for the species. So our first thing was looking and generating species distribution models. Typically, these use environmental data. In Misiones, the northern and central region, really not that much variation. So instead, we focused on habitat integrity, variations in habitat integrity, as well as proximity to human populations. All of these models were generated in an ecological niche modeling program called MaxSent. The species distribution models that were generated allowed us to really highlight the variation in those species. 
Um, and so we could actually see how variable those were. Um, you can kind of sort of see it on Scylla, the little spotted cat, the most variable, 82% was considered suitable, compared to jaguars, the most limited, only 50%. So we already had a guideline of that. If we then went in and combined those species distribution models, we could actually gain insight into how they overlapped and what species diversity was across the region. So was it high or low in terms of species richness? We could take those two data sets for species richness and potential distribution and generate another set of models that allowed us to actually look at movement across these heterogeneous habitats. So we also use a least cost path analysis as well as a broader corridor analysis that allowed us to look at targeting areas for our corridors. Um, and what we did was actually be able to locate three core areas and those three core areas together combine, kind of form a series of stepping stones. It's not realistic to go and say we want to conserve all of it, so we kind of targeted the areas that allow us the maximum mobility for those species. When we do that, we have those three areas which basically vary in the amount of habitat integrity they have currently, as well as the connectivity. We're currently working with the Ministry of Ecology to identify the size and adjacency so we can further prioritize those. And We're gonna go back and look at identifying, um, prioritizing getting people to participate in the core, home landowners, those are mostly private landowners through there, as well as working uh, to survey those areas for current carnivore biodiversity. That's it.